What's going on everybody? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and this is my show, Uncut Astrology, where I take off the mask and go deep behind the veil and give you this week's astrological forecast for the week of May the 4th through the 9th of 2017. Thanks so much for being here and thank you for being a part of the Leo King app. And if you're not part of the Leo King app, make sure that you subscribe today and get that either at the app stores, Google or Apple, and of course you can get it at theleokingapp.com. My May horoscope is now available for download. It's going deep into everything happening in May. You can get that at inclusiveastrology.com. And everybody's been asking how to get a reading with me. I now have an assistant where you can actually talk to and make a phone call. The number is down below here on YouTube, or you can just email her at astrologerdavidpalmer at gmail.com. Now, exciting news to talk about this week. The reason why Mercury has come out of retrograde and it's on top of the planet Uranus. I mean, that's already exciting enough just coming out of a retrograde, but more importantly, when you're coming on top of Mercury and Uranus, it is a wild, crazy, Genius, radical, amazing insights, radical conversations, radical aspects in all degrees. But you know, it's interesting that the sun's in Taurus, right? You know, the sun in Taurus wants to find stability, really be grounded. And there's a lot this week about being grounded in the middle of a lot of wild and crazy energy. And I think that it's interesting that the universe is keeping weights, or I guess you could say, and I don't know why my guides keep showing me anchors, like, no matter how like exciting and crazy things get, there's a lot of stability. So like even though it might feel at times this week like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on and there's so many things that I got to do. It's like everything's pretty grounded and time is there. I think even though it'll feel like time's going fast, you'll, you, if, you, if you separate from it for a second, you realize it's going by. Life goes by too slow for you to really be able to to feel like you can miss out. Like, you're gonna realize that you have the time this week to get things done, that you have the time this week to make things happen, even though you might think it's crazy. Mars is in uh, Gemini. We've got Mercury now direct, and this mutual reception thing is completely making this a crazy, wild merry-go-round in all truth. And especially that Mars is coming on top of a huge major star, it's opposing Antares and Sagittarius. I mean, these are major stars in our system and the North Node is exactly conjuncting Regulus now and this is the final week of Mercury and, or not Mercury, well Mercury based North Node and Virgo. On the 9th, at the end of this week, the North Node switches into Leo. And so, this is a major week because it's a build up. It's a build up to asking yourself, what kind of life do you really want to live? And there's a, there's a hierarchy in life, unfortunately. You can live a very high life, or you can live kind of a mediocre life, or you can live a low life, and it's all up to you. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. There's a lot of those trines happening this week, with the moon especially gonna be in Virgo, but more importantly with the fact that the sun is in Taurus, Pluto is in Capricorn, and the North Node is finishing here in Virgo. And the moon and, and the North Node are gonna hit, you know, right here, Thursday, Friday, beginning of this week, really to let you see Okay, what is the, the life that I really want to live? What is the purity I want to live? And that even though there's so many things and so many possibilities, all you have to do is set your eye on what you feel you deserve. All you have to set your eye on is what you feel like is the best for you. And also what you have to set your eye on is where do I get tempted to go down this road even though I don't want to go there? And why do I get tempted down this road? This is the south node finishing in Pisces, by the way. And with Neptune there, and with Chiron there, it's powerful. Can't, not as powerful as the Moon and North Node in Virgo. So there's this aspect, there's a test over this week. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of anchors to support a very positive and great life in, your, in, in what's going on. But there's a big wake-up call. With this Mercury on top of Uranus, it's a big flash of truth and a flash of light. And more importantly, a flash of ascension or descension of whether or not you're really living in a wholesome quality life or not. I think a lot of this has to do with relationships. We got Jupiter retrograding, of course, in Libra. And how interesting that we also got Venus, which is in the opposite sign of Aries right now, which is going through its shadow direct phase, actually, trying to catch up to where it could finally get out of the shadow phase. But it's still in shadow. So these are very deep identifications of the kind of people we have in our life and whether or not they're the right people for us, the right groups, the right friends, the right people, and whether they're healthy for us, whether they're the quality of life that you want. 
especially because Mercury just came out of retrograde and it's direct in Aries on top of Uranus. So we're dealing with identity and we're dealing with people, Uranus. We're dealing with the kind of people we want, the kind of place in the world that we want to identify ourselves with. You know, integrity is very important in our lives and of course we want to treat everyone with integrity. But there comes a point where your integrity level is defined by the kind of people that you hang around, the kind of people that are on the same mission as you or not. Like, does it feel like these are the kind of people that give you the stimulation in life anymore? Maybe you're switching ideas about what you could think about what kind of people are, are interesting in your life. Mercury needs to be interested. It's the little dog sniffing around the, you know, the counter all the time looking for something. When it's on top of your honest, it's looking for people. What people keep you interested? What people keep you wholesome? What people make you feel good? Remember, the North Node's entering Leo by the end of this week. And that's why I really want to you know, do this to the 9th because on the 10th, of May, we're gonna have the full moon in Scorpio and we're gonna have the North Node in Leo. So there's gonna be a major changing event here, May 9th and 10th. And, and, and it's really all leading to the space to where this is a major test, a major choice in your life. The universe is gonna show you, I think, two sides because there's a very big two-sided aspect of Virgo and Pisces, especially dualistic uh, mutable signs. Like, do you wanna live a very healthy, positive, beautiful, high-quality life? Or do you want to live kind of a mediocre, I don't want to use the word shitty, but I'll just be honest, feeling like you're always constantly behind the eight ball, feeling like things aren't coming together. And a lot of it has to do with the associations in your life. I especially believe because of this Uranus transit with Mercury, I especially believe with Saturn starting to try and Uranus right now, I especially believe with Mars, which is a mutual reception with Mercury. And if the fact that we have so much Mercury aspects happening this week, this really has to do with Hermes and hermetic science and whether or not you're truly in the alchemical process of truly being enlightened in your life or not. You have to actually make the call this week. Like, are you gonna go on the fate train of what you know your divine truth is and your divine light and your divine positivity in the pure place? Or are you just going to throw out the window and fucking try and show integrity for energy, people, projects, situations that are not of that caliber and are not of that light that you want in your life? This is a major wake-up call in that aspect. And especially the fact that Mars is especially on top of these huge major fucking stars, I'm going to be honest with you. And with the fact that we've got a north node on another major star, I mean, this is star power. This is whether or not you are are gonna like be part of and become the star in your life, especially the fact that the North Node's entering Leo for the first time in over like 16 and a half years. It was 1998, October 1998 was the last time North Node came into Leo. Uh, what were you doing in October 1998? I know that's a lot to think about, but that was the last time we had this much star power come in. This is a major time in your life where you need to make the decision this week, this week for where you go in this new portal that's opening May 9th and 10th, which is going to be a major long portal. And you know, watch my May horoscope, download it, get it at inclusiveastrology.com because I talk about how there's this in-between window from now until May 9th and 10th, and then there's this entry portal from May 9th and 10th to the 19th and 20th. And after the 19th and 20th, it's on, like Donkey Kong, a five-year cycle ending that we talk about in the video, especially going back to where were you in your life on May 20th of 2012. So there's some dates for you to come back to and think about October of 1999, uh, you know, May, in, and, and let's do a little bit of June of 2012, especially because of where the Sun and Mars are and a lot of the aspects happening here at the end of Taurus coming up here this month. But I think that a lot of it is we're coming to a place of, you know, who do you want to associate with? What you came here to do? Who do you really want to be? And it's tough making choices like this, but with Jupiter retrograde and Libra, I mean, it's saying that you have good luck when you're with the right people. And they're right in front of you because it's a retrograde, right? Retrogrades mean the planet's coming back at you. It's almost like it's like a closing, uh, like, like trash disposal, you know, coming back your way, you know? It's like showing you the trash or the jewelry that, or the diamonds that are in your life. So it's like, you kind of have to make a choice as everything's coming back to you in relationships right now. Like, is this really what I want? Oh yeah, this is really good for me and this is not good for me. There's a lot of that going on in the universe right now as you make the big choice to these big, big leaps that are coming by the end of this week into new portals and I'll be honest, whole new lives for all of us. So it's a very exciting time and I think honestly, I think that it's a, a time for us to truly be ready for 
true, true power in our life. And I think it's interesting. I just got a little quick phone call there that the message is this. And it was interesting because I want to talk about Saturn square Chiron. I forgot to add that in. Thank God I got that message from the universe. If you're going to build a life of positivity in the adventure of a lifetime, if you have the wrong baggage with you, if you have the wrong energetic vibrations, if you have low vibrations, if you have energies that are toxic, you are not going to create the adventure of your life. And the only way to create the adventure of your life is to have pure, good, and positive, and energetic, and the right vibrational energy and things in your life, or you can't get where you want to go. This week is going to test that, and this week is going to ask you who or what or all are you going to walk to this new portal with on May 9th? Thanks so much for watching me. Thank you for being a part of the Leo King app. Thank you for also um, you know, getting the May horoscope, which is at inclusiveastrology.com. And of course, if you want to book a reading with me, go to uh, just type in this email, astrologerdavidpalmer at gmail.com. Or you can also hit me up. Um, we put the phone number down below for uh, if you want to contact Lauren, my um, assistant. Thanks so much for all the support. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next Uncut.